ladies and gentlemen good evening and welcome to the q4 and fy23 earnings conference call of bank of maharashtra as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded we have with us from the management shri as rajiv managing director and chief executive officer shri ab vijaya kumar executive director shri ashish pandey executive director and all general managers of the bank i now hand the conference over to shri as rajiv thank you and over to you sir thank you ma'am and uh, good afternoon to all <coughs> today our uh, board of directors adopted the results of financial results for the quarter end and the year end that is march 2023 of our bank of maharashtra and we are happy to share our results with all the investors and the results and this this year particularly the quarter it was one of the best quarter as far as bank is concerned and for the whole year the results is comparatively good the total i will share some of the research at a glance then uh, we can share our question and answer session and the total business grown by 21% to 4 lakh 10000 crores and the deposit increased by 16% to reach 2 lakh 34000 crores and the gross advances increased by 30% to 1 lakh 75000 crores as of now the cd ratio is improved to 75% and gross nba 2.47% net nba 0.25% <coughs> with this provision coverage ratio is reached to 98% for the current quarter net profit increased by 136% to reach 840 crore and operating profit grown by 57% to 1855 crore net interest income increased by 36% to 2187 crore for the current quarter and nim improved to 3.78% as of 313 cost to income ratio improved to 38% and roa improved to 1.32% a return of equity improved to 36% and crir improved to 18.14% of which tier 1 is 14.25% yes and the return of equity improved to 26% and the crir improved to 18.14% of which tier 1 is 14.25% for the full year net profit increased by 126% to reach 2602 crores as against 1152 crore for the year last year operating profit has grown shown a growth of 26% to 6099 crores against 4848 crore for the year under 3122 net interest income for the full year grown at 28% and fee based income is increased by only 6% the main reason was during the current year because of the shift in interest rates high uh, profit on sale of securities was not there instead of that we may have we may he we have given around 180 crore mdm provision for uh, srs the uh, more than 5 years that uh, 100% provision we have made if the provision was not there there was a growth of around more than 20% provision uh, growth was there so one time measure we have given uh, sr provision of 100% cost to income ratio for the full year it is 39% as against 44% last year ROA for the full year is 1.1% as against 0.55% for the year end at 2022 return of equity improved to 20% as against 11% for the last year so we have uh, ram sector is the major growth happen and uh, retail was grown by 23% msme is grown by 27% agriculture also Grown by around 
So the total RAM sector is grown by around 24 to 25%. Net advances is grown by 31%. So, last year, up to last quarter, we have got 1,000 rupees, 1,200 crore provision, COVID-19 provision, we have kept it. So, that provision we have not utilized and uh, it is kept as it is. It is not considered for capital adequacy purpose also. It is like a floating nature. As and when required, bank may be able to utilize that. So, these are the uh, major area of the financials are concerned. And I will uh, give my mic to Mr. Uh, uh, Pandeji for regarding digital area, what is the initiative we have taken for the current year, if it is okay, madam. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir, and good afternoon to uh, all the analysts. Uh, warm welcome uh, in this uh, meet. Uh, you would have already seen the bank performance results. So accordingly, to inch up further, uh, both, you know, because bank you would have seen uh, almost say for last one year or so. So bank is adding up the business in the range of say 60,000 to 80,000, 90,000 crores. So that is very much imperative to augment its technology. So first of all, the board has already, you know, adopted and directed to have a budget of more than 1,000 plus crores to augment this technology on various counts. So bank is working upon the three important pillars. One is the digital operations. So it means whatever banking operations we are doing, so converting it to more and more technology, whether it is a reconciliation, whether it is uh, reconciliation even not T plus one, but whether more frequency within the day. So that is one sort of thing. And so second is what sort of operations can be converted to digital journeys? So bank, you would have seen the two press release which has come for on our for this commencement day, 8th of February, and another last month because now bank has also. Uh, taken a decision that each month there will be a uh, digital launch day. So many of the things uh, pertaining to these three pillars and the third pillar is digital compliance. So because the compliance is one thing, when it becomes a legacy, it takes a lot of time and uh, you know the resources as well. So that is what we are thinking to imbibe all those sort of compliances within the journey itself. So within these three, we are banking upon, uh, among us others, uh, basically on the three things. The one is the artificial intelligence that we are uh, very on the verge of finalizing so that we will be directly taking up. The robotic process automation long back we have already started deploying. So almost 10 processes we have concluded and the 62 approval we had. Around 100 uh, we have already identified. So that business process finalization and all is happening. And the third is machine learning which is analytics or a deep learning, I should say, it is in place with the analytics team in the bank and that we are using for our soft collections, also for the upsell, cross-sell and also some of the areas where we have to strengthen or, you know, to understand where our, where our stress book will be. So I think on the these three pillars which we are working, the fourth is that already which is in our website, uh, we have come with almost, I think, more than 50. RFPs for our various collaborations and IT initiatives and going forward uh, within this month itself probably you will be seeing some of the biggest uh, you know RFPs which we are coming on the on the lifestyle banking and other things. So in this uh, again uh, what we propose and the board which is deliberated is that on the business acquisition side we are thinking for starting with the 5% not only on the asset and liability but even on the third party uh, products. So with the starting from say 4 to 5% this year to increase it to almost 25-30% in next three years time. So this is what we are looking from the technological side. And secondly, we have done some very big collaborations on the on the CI Pro. Second is the Crisil, which is already in the press news. And that is the repository. So we have strengthened our system of appraisals in the bank. And the third, where you are, we are using AI. So in brief, this is the total, uh, the vision that the board is having and on which the entire bank, uh, all of us, we are functioning. This is the brief on the um, uh, technological or the digital initiative which bank is aspiring and the areas which we want to cover. Thank you. Should we begin with the question and answer session, sir?
Yes, there's one point I forgot to tell you, and the board has already recommended uh, 13% dividend of also for the current year as against the last year it was 5 percentage. Yes. Now we can take up uh, the question answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. <coughs> We have our first question from the line of Ashok Ajmera from Ashcon Global. Please go ahead. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Uh, my compliments to you, sir. Very rich compliments to uh, you, Rajiv, sir, Vijay Kumar ji, Ashish ji, for the fantastic performance. I mean, it's not that only one quarter or two quarter, quarter after quarter, and in the whole year, you have given one of the best performance taking the bank total business beyond 400,000 crores. And I think you can be ranked as one of the best banks if you look at at least eight to nine parameters out of 10 parameters. So exceeds exceedingly well. So my compliments to you all. And especially even on the dividend front, you know, going from 0.5 to 1.3, I mean, that's 13% uh, is also another, uh, I mean, big achievement uh, for a small bank like, I mean, it's all in the sense that business, if you compare with other banks, the overall business, uh, like Bank of Maharashtra. Uh, having said that, sir, and even on the operating profit, you have performed well. Uh, 1,855 in this quarter is against 1,580. On the provisioning side, sir, uh, the provisions have increased. Uh, even though the provision for NPA is not increased much, hardly 7 crore. So, uh, uh, this other provisions which have increased, will you elaborate on that? Uh, and whether it is going to be the feature in the coming years too, uh, this is one. Secondly, after growing so fast, uh, uh, you know, even in the last quarter, I think the credit growth is almost 29.5% or so. Where do we say, see the bank, you know, going forward? That are we going to, uh, because still our base is low, so are, are we going to go on the same pace in percentage sum and uh, making it a... Uh, you know, almost uh, totally 100% provided bank uh, with the ROA of, uh, of say 1.5 or so. So, what is our uh, basically uh, the plan for the future of, uh, for the FI 23-24? And one, sir, on this uh, Ashish ji's uh, digital journey. I mean, he has taken us through the digital initiative. Out of this 1,000 crore, uh, which has been approved by the board, how much has already been spent uh, till now? And uh, how much uh, do we plan to spend in 23-24? This is just a few observations and questions in the first round. And I think I'll get to the chance for the second round. Yes, uh, Mr. Kashmira, <clears throat> thank you so much. And first, first query is regarding provisioning. The total provision for March 23 is 945, uh, as against 582 for December and 365 for corresponding March. You can see that the split we have given in this uh, 17 page number 17 of the presentation. That provision for standard assets is given to 545 crore is the provision for non-performing assets. It is in tune with uh, other quarters also. And basically, 0 0.47 was the net NBA for last quarter, and additional 250, 300 crore requirement was given for this reducing the NBA. So otherwise, the uh, provision <coughs> uh, may not be required for in coming years, coming years, coming quarter also, because there is nothing to reduce now. Because the 0 0.25 range, we may have to continue uh, as a net NBA ratio that will continue. So that here. I think 200, 300 crore provision, excess provision we have made. Second point is that regarding 280 crore provision we have gone for standard assets. The standard assets is two component is there. One component is for increase in the growth uh, corresponding to December 22. From December 22, 10 to 15,000 crore standard assets is increased. 
on an average it is coming around the point 5% if it is coming around 70 75 crore will come for standard assets provisioning and the remaining provision we kept for uh, cushion a uh, little floating provision we kept it because when the bank is coming for ecl nature then uh, next year is rbi is given that to 2024 onwards bank has to give importance for conversion from the present provisioning uh, to is expected credit flows methodology so we are creating certain provisions for in standard assets provisioning for moving for because once the expected credit flows is has to be classified under standard assets provisioning not from nba provisioning so some 150 crore is kept it for that so is a floating type nature so 167 crore non performing investment is given 167 is given that is basically for uh, sr provisioning because we have some uh, sr that is uh, below 5 years or 3 to 4 years above 5 years so that 100% provisioning we have made so with this i think we don't have any sr right. now the provision is to be given 100% we have provided so otherwise uh, provisioning in future also there may not have much uh, impact requirement for provision is concerned <laughs> second point is there regarding the growth current year the growth was uh, 30% growth was in advances and 16 to 17% for deposit growth deposit growth we have not taken much deposits because uh, wherever possible we have gone for our borrowing window we have utilized so that slightly deposit growth has come down and the second point was the interest rate in the market interest rates were also slightly high so we have not utilized that window so in coming year 23 24 bank may be able to as per the direction given by the board 20 to 20 to 22% is the growth rate in messaging by the credit and uh, 15 to 16 percent is the growth rate for deposits. The growth rate of deposits of the current year will continue for next year also, but the advances growth is likely we are bringing down because uh, last year 30 percent uh, growth rate was there, and the base also year after year base also is increasing. Definitely two to three percent we have to bring down the growth rate. So otherwise there is no such problems and we will continue to grow and we kept five lakh crore business. target of financial year of 24 last year we have kept uh, uh, this year we have kept uh, 4 lakh crore business target instead of 4 lakh crore business target super achievers target of 4 lakh 10000 we, we have re- reached so 5 lakh target is kept for financial year 24 and uh, we, with this growth rate we may be able to reach that regarding the digital i think our uh, pandey ji will tell you that uh, correctly that's what is the Uh, yeah ajmer sahab actually uh, the correct for the every year we are thinking 1000 plus and uh, you know we t- generally starts uh, from the august uh, september to the next august so in this already we have spent i think more than 600 crores and uh, the some of the rfps are already floated which are on the wait for the closure some are already closed and some we are going to float another say one month time so i think uh, as we said the budgeted uh, more than 1000 plus crores that we will be going to inch up and end up with in the this year as well as the next year okay sir uh, if i am permitted uh, uh, we had certain uh, accounts you know they are allocated for uh, 13 accounts i think about 20 uh, 2700 crores shortlisted uh, So what is the status they are uh, in NARCL? Okay, NARCL, NARCL, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, this uh, NARCL account list is of course dynamic. It keeps changing every time because some accounts are getting added, some accounts are getting deleted. At present, it is 2,400 crores now. Uh, uh, we feel that uh, this uh, it is shortlisted for NARCL. Uh, some accounts will come in the first quarter. Uh, and uh, remaining uh, uh, in the uh, current financial year two accounts are, one account is already been two accounts are already been uh, received uh, in uh, q4 uh, one is jp infra uh, and another is mitchell corp of course uh, though it was an arcl bid uh, actually it was won by another arc in swiss challenge 
and finally the account was transferred. So two accounts finally done for our bank and uh, remaining will happen now in the current financial year. Uh, just little more I add along with our GM recovery of Jake Maria, uh, ED. Uh, total number of uh, accounts shortlisted in NRCL 43. Bank of Maharashtra has got 12 accounts amounting to 2,673. And as rightly JP Infra, that one account is, uh, uh, no, is a discussion. Okay. Remaining 11 and they are in the process. So, sir, the way we are going, the, the gross NPA is also expected to be reduced considerably in 24. Because that's still, I mean, as compared to what we have provided for the net NPA has come down considerably to 0.25, but gross NPA is still, I think, 2.47 or something. Uh, uh, is there any major uh, reduction scope in the gross NPA in this year, coming year, 24, I mean, 23, 24? So we will try to bring down below 2. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. I'll come back again. I have some other queries also, but just to give the opportunity to answer. Okay. Thank you. A reminder to participants to press star and 1 to ask a question. We have a next question from the line of Akash Jain from ASCON Global Services. Please go ahead. Sir, congratulations for a fantastic set of numbers. My question is regarding the gold loan book size. What is your target uh, for the gold loan book? How is the book behaving in terms of delinquencies? And what is the yield of the gold loan book and the means that you are enjoying? That is my first question. And my second question is your outlook on the restructured loans. So how is the MSME restructured book behaving? And what is the percentage of MSME restructured book to total advances as on date? That is my second question. Yeah, gold loan, uh, gold loan book total gold loan portfolio of the bank is around seven thousand crore, and we have re kept a very competitive pricing for the gold loan because the risk weight is zero. Uh, but our average yield on the gold loan is around seven point two five percent with a zero delinquency. So that is one good sign of our gold loan portfolio. This comprises both from the retail segment also and the agriculture segment also. Regarding the restructured book, uh, we had uh, only 4,200 crore of total restructured, which are most likely to be come out from the current year because the periods are getting over. Uh, accounts are more or less working fine. There is not much delinquencies are observed. Even in our total SMA, if you see, it is uh, almost 0.45% of our total uh, advances book. So restructuring book is performing nicely and there is not no major risk on the uh, uh, restructured book also. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, another question is considering the accumulated losses that you're carrying on your book. So what kind of taxation we can expect in FY24 and your comments on the DTA reversal going forward? Sir, we do not have any accumulated loss in our accounting book. In income tax, we have an accumulated loss. And accordingly, we don't need to make any uh, tax provision for that. But whatever the DTA we have created earlier against our losses, that also is already reversal is done. Now, uh, not much DTA is available. It is only the timing difference DTAs are on book uh, of a small amount. And uh, overall, carry forward losses roughly 8,000 crore. So it will give us benefit for another two years. Okay. And... Uh, with regards to credit costs, what would be a guidance since the provision requirement seems to be less now and EPHs are also under control? So can we expect a credit cost say, below 0.5% for FY24? Yes, yes it, will, it will be around the 0.5 to 0.75 range we can keep it. Okay, for FY24? Yes. What our credit card we are seeing, that is on account of additional provision we have made, to, in order to bring down the net NPA. So, go and, what, uh, sir, is stored, uh, sir uh, stored, that it will be below 0.5. Okay. And uh, your outlook on the treasury book? Treasury book, now that, uh, whatever that uh, bad patch we have already seen, and you know that 
Uh, now, the RBI this time has paused the uh, rate also, and going forward, we are expecting that softening of yield. So, with this, that uh, we are expecting that not only the yield of the treasury will go up, as well as that uh, we will uh, book the trading profit, and there will not be any uh, MTM depreciation. So, overall, outlook is good in respect of the treasury. Yeah, and with regards to corporate credit growth, uh, which are the sectors that uh, has led to this kind of good growth in the corporate book? Earlier, we were focusing on different clusters like pharma cluster, textile cluster, also infrastructure projects, especially Namami Gange. So, uh, going forward, now which sectors are we focusing? Are we continuing the same focus, the sectors we discussed earlier? Yeah, I think yes. we are continuing. Yes, yes, yes. it is the same sectors what we have grown that because where the earlier bank has not grown some of the sectors like pharma. This is a LRD area where bank was not having any exposure, little exposure we have taken LRD and other manufacturing sector and the corporate sector the growth is, though it is classified under corporate, the major component is coming from mid corporate sector that we have looking for now. Not this bigger corporate we are not looking for. Okay. And sir, what is your sanctions pipeline as on date for the corporate book? 7,000. Sir, uh, around 7,000 crore we already have uh, pipeline, sir. Sanction pipeline. Okay. And fund based, non fund based? Sir, basically it is more of a fund based only. Fund based will be extra. Non fund, non -fund will be extra. Okay. Non fund will be extra. Sir. Okay. So that is all from my side. As of now, I will come back in queue. Yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question. Please press star and one on your phone. We have a question from the line of Ashok Ajmera from Ashcon Global. Please go ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think Akash is also from my company, please. And uh, we have been only asking the question to the management. Uh, most of the points have been covered. I would just like to know uh, something about the NBFT exposure of the bank and how are we placed uh, on overall limits on that and co-lending and this, uh, where are we heading? Uh, what kind of yield are we getting from the NB NBFT business and what is our outlook on that, sir? Uh, sir, uh, regarding NBFT sector, we are continuously assessing our uh, uh, sanction exposure and based on that, we are taking uh, decisions as and when required. And uh, we are uh, taking exposure in the top rated NBFCs only uh, with the focus of having good return also. That is prime, sir. And regarding uh, co lending, after having gained uh, ex uh, experience, we are poised for uh, good growth in co lending. And uh, we are working on that front along with di uh, digitalization of that co lending process. What is our total uh, book size of NBFC? Loan trade loan book. It is approximately 10,000 crore. Thank you. I request you to come back in the queue for follow up questions. We have our next question from the line of Himanshu Daluja from Aditya Villa Sun Life AMC. Please go ahead. Sure. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. So, thanks for the opportunity. Just a few small quick questions. Firstly, uh, given uh, we have seen a margin expansion of 18 basis points in this quarter as well, and as the deposit uh, pricing is catching up, how you see the margin outlook going ahead? Do you see any still further scope of a margin expansion? Uh, so, that's my first question. Uh, second question is around, are you seeing any signs of... Uh, withdrawal uh, uh, of the sanction limits of the corporate because of any nature of slowdown in any of the sectors. So that's my second question. And my third question is, how is the pricing competitive intensity uh, at this point from the corporate, pri the, uh, corporate pricing? So that's a small uh, quick question, two, three. The first one is regarding the margins. I think now as of the present, as of the present quarter, it is 3.78. Uh, 
I think uh, we will be able to continue with the same range of margin with a plus or minus 20 25 basis point here and there. Something it will be definitely it will be about 3.5 percent. We may be able to keep that. Regarding that, the pricing is also connected with the margin, and the pricing is concerned. And uh, uh, we are looking risk based to pricing only. And uh, even if corporates also wherever highly competitive corporates, we are not. looking for so the pricing and that reasonable profit or reasonable pricing people uh, that type of corporates only we are looking for that so the pricing part as of now though competition is there in spite of competition and our cost of deposit and casa ratio is high so slightly we can go with the lower pricing in the market with highly rated customers that is what we are looking for that as you are aware that our uh, pricing in housing loans 8.40 is the lowest in the industry actually so the same kind of pricing differentiated pricing will be do for highly qualitative customers that is the uh, strategy which we are adopting so the portfolio also for example in housing loans and other things uh, if you see the portfolio of our housing loan portfolio or that type of retail portfolio for about 800 is coming The double digit is coming. That fifty to twenty percent is coming above eight hundred. Eight hundred number is coming. So the quality is improved. So the strategy of the board is to improve the quality above the uh, operating profit level, so that the provision has to be nil. That is the strategy we are adopting. That the third point is regarding sanction withdrawal. There is no such uh, issues, and we have enough cushion. But we are on selective basis only corporate. selections are doing only the two basis with reasonable pricing so there is no such issues are concerned still there is good flow of corporate is coming and uh, selective basis we are picking up that okay sure sir so just a one small uh, last final questions uh, uh, when you mentioned that uh, you are expecting the margins to range between plus minus 25 basis point in the coming fiscal year i understand that downside uh, triggers for the margins if uh, decelerated to 25 what would be the margins uptick trigger according to you in the coming year so why i am keeping that 25 basis margin plus or minus because as you are aware when the 50 48 to 50 percent of the uh, rllr is based upon the external benchmark so rbi is already post the rates and we don't know maybe one or one more quarter they may pause and chances are there the interest rate cycle is coming down then definitely the rates may come starter coming down on divide basis or 50 basis point each definitely this will impact the rll so then when the prices are coming down definitely that uh, transfer transfer of pricing has to be happen so that is why i used the 25 basis point here and there we told but uh, with the 3.50 range bound is kept at the margin that we feel that 3.5 to 3.60 is an im is one of the good, uh, good margin actually that is why we have uh, used that wording that okay sure sir thanks a lot thanks a lot thank you yes thank you We have a next question from the line of Vikram Damani from Damani Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yes. The volume is little low. Is it better? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. I just had a question with relation to taxes. Um, year on year, on a percentage basis, it's fallen significantly, and even on a quarter on quarter basis, there doesn't seem to be any sort of. Uh, Consistency in terms of percentages. So, if you could throw some light on it, I understand you said you had 8,000 crore worth of carry forward losses. But uh, going forward, uh, what can we expect? Uh, you know, if you can just explain this a little bit. Thank you. Uh, regarding taxes, uh, the, what figure you are seeing in the uh, profit and loss? This is not the outgo of any tax liability. This is the reversal of DTA that we have done. You know, when that we are writing off the account and over in the provision. So what are uh, details you have created on the disallowed dis provision? That has to be uh, reversed once you are writing of that. So because of that, that uh, there was a uh, tax liability in the form of DTA reversal. 
and why, why and since because we are holding 8000 crore uh, carry forward losses so even though the taxable income may come but it will be adjusted by the uh, what were that losses we are having okay so that's that's a good thing uh, to come from our double pass good to know um that's it for me thank you very much and uh, congratulations again it's it's been a great quarter thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of jk jain from jk jain and company please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for a very good set of numbers uh, one question when we have got a capital adequacy ratio of uh, 17 18% then where is the need for further capital infusion? Is it a just a uh, just an uh, resolution to be in hand? Because uh, it was said that uh, in the first quarter uh, about 1,000 crore rupees of equity will be raised. And <coughs> second question: What will be the price of the equity? Because the company is now now just uh, looking very good. So if you dilute the capital already, about two years back the capital was diluted and the equity was doubled. So, a uh, bank of your size having an equity of 6,000 crore rupees looks a little embarrassing while you are showing a very good set of numbers, but if capital is diluted, so it will affect your orders. So, your view on this, please. Yes, <coughs> this, uh, uh, this capital adequacy ratio is now 18.14 percent. And uh, what you told is correctly, it is correct that uh, ratios will be affected. Uh, because of the high uh, equity of 6,000 crore, but that is already uh, what is uh, already happened, and the government of India's uh, equity investment is already there. But for this <coughs> growth, growth is concerned. Now the percent rate is though it is 18 percent, when the bank is wanted to grow at the 20 to 22 percent range, if you grow, the same profitability profit itself may not be sufficient to keep the pace of the growth. So what we thought it should be 50-50 that whatever the growth rate is coming, 50% growth rate will that growth will take care of from the additional operat, additional net profit generated profit generated during the years, and the remaining has to be funded the capital through uh, either borrowing or for equity. So over a period of time, this 7,500 crore umbrella provision is given by the board is only for. For two to three years, growth capital is concerned because the government of India and we don't want to require any kind of capital from government also. But when the equity, when we are raising that, this is only for growth capital. But you can see that ROA, ROE, if you see the bank is able to go at the rate of 20-22% ROE, it is one of the best return for the equity holders also. So for the time being, to reach, then second point is that regarding SEBI guidelines, France has to follow, it is a compliance issue. By 24, you be, have to bring down the 75%. So the, this capital raising process is mainly for reducing the uh, shareholding of the uh, government of India to below 75 over a period of time. So you can do one thing that government of India disinvest her, uh, their percentage instead of bloating the equity capital of the bank of your size and which is progressing so fast and so good because I don't think there is any other bank uh, in India which has got a virtually negative uh, NPA and uh, such a good profitability and all these things. So why, because I have seen that in all the PSUs, the uh, capital is so high like your bank and Kanara Bank and all these things, so it's high time that yes. when the conditions of bank has improved because of the uh, very good work done by people like you and in other banks also. So the, you can impress upon the, go bank, uh, the government that they should, is, if they want the money and uh, they want to uh, keep it below, uh, uh, come but say 80 percent, they disinvest. Why, why the so banks I think suffer? The government also may look into that. We will see that because they are, they are also getting the opinion from different sides. Okay. I think uh, how uh, they may think we will, we have to, I think already, some of the market participants have already, as you have suggested, they have already suggested to the government and they may look for that. That is my feeling. In any case, what will be the rate of, uh, if suppose you issue shares in the first quarter, what is your expected rate for the for the shares? I, I think at least maybe 40, 45 rupees, something like that. No, that depends upon the SAP valuation has to be seen. So uh, that depends upon the value. 
we have to see that for this issue actually we have planned for last quarter also because of the value was yeah. not there so we have postponed actually so postponement any time it can happen that is no if it is not good definitely it will postpone that definitely that so uh, would you say that uh, the result which you have shown in this quarter this fourth quarter uh, it will be better in the first quarter of uh, 24 we can jolly well accept uh, feel that yes as of now it is it will be better as of now because we don't know uh, that the uh, things that the from the present point of view of the results i think uh, we can have a better results that is what we are expecting that the end the question very small question it's out of my curiosity because we are we generally see that nim is usually 4% 5% 3% uh, but uh, i usually talk to people and they say that the banks are having a margin of 60% 40% because if you are landing at 9 rupees and, uh, and getting fund at 6 rupees so i will say you are have you got a margin of 50% why you bank people are saying that we have got a name of 3% only what is this statistical uh, calculation can you highlight this or can you tell us uh, through some light why don't we say percentage of operating profit that should be the percentage of gross profit when we talk about any industry houses we say this company is earning a profit of 30% gross margin why banks all over the world they go for 3% 2% it looks very so uh, very uh, very uh, very low if you start saying that yes, we, are, we are having a margin of 40% uh, the prices of shares and stakeholders will go up like anything your view yes yeah, that we may have to look into that i don't have any because the market practices are there generally but uh, we will if you have any suggestions we will look into that if any kind of uh, uh, disclosure is required that we will do that Uh, it is a question not to you but question to the general fraternity of the banking sector uh, yes. particularly from the american side thank you sir thanks a lot okay. one thing one thing is that it is that uh, measure income uh, of the bank is from the interest income so right. the other parameters are also measured in that uh, interest in, based on the interest income that's why right. the name etc it is coming to pitch here and one one thing we should not forget that there are the operational cost that can be also factor in percentage term Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Jayesh Shah from OHM Portfolio Equity Research. Please go ahead. Hello, thank you, sir, and big congratulations for uh, excellent results. Uh, I just wanted to clarify. I don't know if I heard it right. Did you say you have a thousand crore of capex budget of uh, expense budget for digital infra? And how much of this you said you spent some six hundred crores? So is this 600 crores coming into PNL or it is capitalized? No, it is uh, the total budget is total budget both capital and revenue, and we used to calculate in that way that how much we are going to have an IT spend, IT and digital now put together. So actually both it is collective only. I see. Can you give a breakup of capital and revenue expense of uh, the 600 crores that you spent in FY23? uh i think it you can take it around say i think 60 40 right now because now a lot many rsps are already floated in last one year and uh, the some of the rsps are going to be floated in next one or two months so that is the reason that uh, since you are going to acquire the software so the first year uh, you know what is the 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 license cost and other things will go into the capital and then ats amc say other things will go into the revenue I see. So 60% will be the and capital expenditure, and 40 will be the other. It will be in between 60, 40, or yes. 70, 30 range. It will come mainly for AMCs and other things. Then uh, depreciation also will one of the part. It will yes. come because uh, within three year period we may have to write off. That means uh, one third only, one third you have to write off that. Yes. I see. And the 600 crore will go to 1000 crores for the next two years each year. Yes. 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 I see. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Akash Jain from Ascon Global Services. Please go ahead. Sir, my question is uh, the recovery from return of account. So, as on that, what is the uh, accumulated return of uh, accounts amount, and uh, what is the recovery target from that? 
And my second question is, since we are taking uh, many initiatives, especially on the process fund, making it digital, so is there any scope of improvement in uh, cost to income ratio? We are already having one of the good cost to income ratio. We are one of the most efficient banks. But is, is, is there further scope of improvement? Yeah, I think you can uh, yes, uh, uh, recovery in uh, return of accounts um, uh, is uh, at present uh, it is 1000 crore, it is almost 5% uh, of what is the stock. Uh, and we expect uh, same uh, see, 5 to 6, uh, 7% in uh, current financial year also, around 1200 crores. Okay, I think last quarter it was around 18,000 crores total return of. Hey, the stock is, uh, of course. The uh, right of stock, uh, uh, rightly said by you, 18,000. It is uh, growing also. Now it is 20,000 crore. Out of that 1,000 crore, we have recovered the current yes, year. Yes. I think the same, same per uh, five, to six, uh, 5 to 6 percent range will continue, continue for future years also. It's a continuous process. Okay. And uh, last quarter also we had a discussion regarding excess SLR. I think it was last quarter, it was around 5 to 6,000 crores. So as on date, what is the excess SLR we have? Would it be used for improving CD ratio? 4 to 5 percent excess SLR is still it is there. So that uh, around 12,000 crore excess SLR is there that we can utilize for borrowing or it can be converted to for credit purpose. Okay, okay. And uh, what is the target uh, we are having for uh, CD ratio? CD ratio is now around 75 percent. So 75 to 78 percent is the target we have kept it. 78 percent is the ideal according to us at present. And any plans to rationalize branches? Yes, yes. Branches, this is a continuous process. Last year also we have rationalization done by 30 to 40 branches, either merged or we have closed. And another 200 branches we have opened, new branches in different districts. So this year also, the sa this is a process, same way because loss making and uh, those branches where compounded annual growth is below 5 percent for continuously for 5 years. So especially rural branches, all these things. Those branches will either will be closed or it will be merged or if it is a loss making branch. And correspondingly, we will open 200 branches. Permission is already given by the board for the current year. So now, as of now, 2,203 branches is there. So by FI24, I think we may be able to reach around 2,400 branches. Okay. Yes. Any comments on NCLT? Any recovery expected through NCLT resolution? Yeah, NCLT uh, one big account of three is there, uh, uh, where uh, uh, now we are expecting uh, in the current financial year. DSKDL is there, uh, two, three small uh, uh, accounts are also there, but uh, three is one big. So when is uh, when are we expecting recovery from this? Uh, it should happen in current fi uh, quarter or at the most up to September. Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you sir, all the best. That is all from my side. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a question from the line of Ashok Ajmera from Ashcon Global Services. Please go ahead. Thank you for giving the opportunity once again. Sir, I would like to discuss a little more on the treasury side now uh, because it can give another good slip now to the profitability of the bank after having seen in this quarter the losses uh, uh, in both uh, if you see at the segment uh, also the treasury has this quarter has given the loss. So now since the, the rates are stabilized and the RBI has taken a fall, now how do we the treasury uh, operation going ahead and giving us what kind of uh, roughly the profitability so that uh, other profitability being intact, this will add uh, further to that. So any color on that, I mean, how much are we estimating and how our, our modified duration also has come down. So I think uh, we should have a good uh, uh, operative profit from the treasury operation. 
Yeah, you, uh, so you rightly said uh, during this period when the yield was the higher side, we have accumulated 8,000, 10,000 uh, that securities where the yield is above seven, seven and a half percent. So now with the since the RBI has paused the rate and uh, going forward that it is purchased the yield will further soften. Uh, so this would be the right time to uh, earn the good trading profit. Secondly, uh, in, in previous year we suffered most because of the MTM. With the software rate, the MTM was not there. And second, uh, and one thing is that if you see our overall M duration, it is below 1.25. So this will also have help in uh, keeping the check on the MTM. So going forward, there will not be much MTM or the MTM will be nil. And by selling the securities, when the yield is softened, the, the bank will earn uh, good profit. So you can expect good contribution from the side in the uh, current financial and into profit and loss account. Are we looking to park, uh, if we have a uh, proper liquidity, uh, the funds into the CP where the rates are comparatively higher, the yield is decreased, you are getting especially 6 months, 9 months CPs. Uh, I think you are getting anything from 8.75 to 9.25 in A-rated, uh, well-rated companies. Are you, uh, uh, are we looking at that opportunity? It will depend on the what is the uh, uh, lending, lending demand. If the lending demand is there and we are getting good rates, so we will prefer to uh, put the fund in the lending instead of the putting in treasury. You know that treasury, the rate you will not get what you are going to get in lending. Having said that, uh, we will uh, explore the good opportunity and uh, at project time we will uh, uh, purchase security and sell it. So that trading profit we are going to do. And good thing is that if you see the uh, uh, this financial jet, uh, in quarter you will see that treasury yield has also uh, gone up. From 6.04 it has gone up to 6.34. So with this accumulation of the securities, not only the yield will, uh, will, be, yield will go up, uh, the, you will have more opportunity to earn the trading profit. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, a little observation. I was just going through one note on the that uh, fraud account where the total amount of last year of I mean 933 some odd crores has come down to 735 or something. I don't exactly remember the figure. So is that the recovery from the fraud account or? Uh, uh, I mean, when, when it was already 100% provided for, uh, what is that exactly and where, where is it come in the profit quarter of this year? No, no, uh, the fraud which has been identified of 933 crore, this includes also the unrecovered interest. But basically we make the provision only for the uh, balance which is outstanding. So 735 crore is the balance which is outstanding. Against that we have made a 100 percent provision. Only for clarification, uh, this uh, this provision has not made during the current year. We are holding the provision, and that since it was uh, uh, declared fraud, same provision is carried out. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Shri A.S. Rajiv, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you so much for all support given by uh, you. And once again, thank you, madam. And if any other further questions or any clarification anybody needs, please let us know that. You can send it the query and uh, we will respond that immediately. And uh, once again, thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Bank of Maharashtra, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.